value added tax part 2 what is the need for vat introduction of vat to understand this we have to see the old systems of vat and why these systems were replaced by the vat for this we will take one example assume the tax rate in this example is 10 percent let's uh, assume that there is a one manufacturer this manufacturer sells goods to the wholesaler this wholesaler sells goods to the retailer and finally the retailer sells these goods to the general public now as per the sales tax at the time of sale the person the seller will have to pay the sales tax assume manufacturer sells the goods to the wholesaler at thousand rupees wholesaler sells to retailer at 1500 rupees and retailer sells these goods to the public at 2000 rupees as we have already assumed the tax rate is 10 percent now there are three system old system which were present in the past first system was single point tax second system was multiple point tax and the third system was retail sales tax according to single point tax tax will be levied only at the first sale so here the first sale is manufacturer selling it to the wholesaler so if we apply the tax at here so 10 percent of thousand will come 100 rupees as the tax there is there will be no further tax in this system so the total tax which will be recovered by the government will be 100 in single point tax now in the second multiple point tax system tax will be levied at each and every cell so first cell thousand rupees hundred rupees tax second wholesaler to retail retailer 1500 again tax of 10 percent 150 rupees retailer selling it to the public at 2000 again there will be a tax of 10 percent that is 200 so the total comes to 1 100 150 and 200 that is coming 450 will be the tax collected by the government under this system now if we look at the another system there is a retail sales tax it means the sales tax will be levied at the end that is ultimate sales to the general public whenever it will happen the tax will be applicable so manufacturer to wholesaler there will be no tax under retail sales tax and then wholesaler to retailer no tax but when retailer is selling it to the general public there will be a tax uh, that will be 10 percent that is 200 so in retail sales tax the tax collected by government will be 200 now if we see the final position single point tax the government is going to recover 100 rupees multiple point tax government will recover 450 as tax and retail sales tax system the government will be able to recover 200 100 rupees this is less recovery it is not ideal multiple point tax it is higher recovery so this is this will put an extra burden on the public this is also not recommended retail sales tax is 200 so whatever is due to the government because the ultimate sale is at 2000 so at 10 percent rate the government should collect 200 only and in this system government is collecting 200 but this system is also not suitable because it is not practicable in india we will see all these system in detail apart from this there is a vat value added tax in this system manufacturer will pay 100 rupees tax wholesaler will pay 50 rupees 
and retailer will pay 50 rupees both these taxes wholesaler retailer will pay tax only on value addition so let's see what is the value addition wholesaler sells goods at 1500 but purchases at 1000 rupees so value addition is 500 500 ka 10 percent 50 retailer sells selling price is 2000 purchase price 1500 the difference the value addition is again 500 10 percent 50 so government could you do 200 and government has received 200 this is a practicable in india and that is why vat has been introduced in india now we will see the systems in detail that is in exam they can be asked to write a short note on the system like single point tax system what is the tax effect as we have already seen the government will be able to recover 100 rupees only in single point tax system there will be two losses in this system to the government's first is normal tax loss instead of 200 government gets just 100 rupees so there is a normal tax loss of 100 rupees abnormal tax loss p ho sakta hai there is a there are chances of under invoicing and under invoicing ki wajah se jo loss hoga government ko that is abnormal tax loss as we have already seen ki only first stage pe hi tax lagta hai baki stages pe tax nahi lagta is system mein so manufacturer can manipulate the invoice under invoice agar wo kar de 1000 rupees ki jage invoice agar 800 ki issue karta hai then jo tax aayega wo 80 rupees aayega 800 pe 10 percent 80 rupees so again there will be a abnormal loss of 20 rupees in this system now let's look at the multiple point tax system this is important from exam point of view also because it explain the concept of cascading effects in this system we have already seen that the government will collect 450 as tax instead of 200 and this is not good for the country because it will put additional burden on the general public so first disadvantage is that it puts the additional burden on the general public second there is a cascading effect type 1 it means taxing the same value again and again if you can see if you observe this carefully ye 1000 rupees pe 100 rupees tax diya hai again 1500 pe 150 1500 already include 1000 rupees so 1000 rupees is getting tax again at in uh, hands of wholesaler which is included in 1500 and again 2000 maybe ye 1000 included hai so again in the hands of retailer 1000 rupees gets tax thrice in the hands of manufacturer then wholesaler then again in the hands of retailer and because of this the there is an increase in the prices so this is the first type of cascading effect that is taxing the same value again and again there is another cascading effect that is tax on tax in this 100 rupees ka jo tax collect kiya hai manufacturer ne wholesaler se wo wholesaler ki price mein included rehta hai that is again 100 rupees ke upar tax lagta hai in the hands of wholesaler aur ye recovery karta hai wholesaler 100 rupees ki retailer se retailer jo 100 rupees included rehta hai uske upar fir se tax dena padta hai so 100 rupees ka jo tax rehta hai it is tax again in the hands of wholesaler and retailer similarly 150 rupees ka jo tax pay karta hai wholesaler it gets again taxed in the hands of retailer because 150 ye recover karta hai retailer se retailer isko recover karta hai public se again it gets taxed in the hands of retailer technically if you see tax should be levied on the sale price and not on the tax so this is also not good this is a second type of cascading effect that is tax on tax this is a complete little bit a complicated item and it will take a a bigger example to understand that will i will explain later on but 
इन दिस पॉइंट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कास्केडिंग इफेक्ट के ऊपर क्वेश्चन आ सकता है सो देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ कास्केडिंग इफेक्ट टेक्सिंग द सेम वैल्यू अगेन एंड अगेन you can quote this example in the exams and cascading effect second types it is a tax on tax now we'll talk about the retail sales tax system tax effect as you can see tax due tha government ko 200 and government has received 200 so in this system you can see there is no tax loss no tax gain no cascading effects so this should be ideal in this system but this is not practicable in india why it is not practicable there are thousand hundred lakhs of a uh, retailer which are hawkers bahut hi small small hai and it is very difficult for the government ki ye last sale kab ho raha hai aur wo pay karte hai ya nahi government ko to check this it is very difficult that is why it is not practicable in india after looking at all the three system let's talk about the vat that is value added tax system kaise ye work karta hai in this we have already seen that manufacturer 1000 pe sell karta hai 100 rupees tax pay karta hai wholesaler will pay tax only on value addition that is 1500 selling price minus purchase price 500 and retailer again jo value addition hua hai 500 ka uske upar tax kare, pay karega 50 rupees so total tax due to the government is 200 and total tax received by the government is 200 there is no tax loss no tax gain no cascading effect this is practicable in india through tax credit system ye bahut hi important hai that you have to understand the tax credit system how it works let's go to the manufacturer first manufacturer sell karta hai 1000 rupees pe this is the first sale टैक्स ड्यू आ रहा है इसका 10 परसेंट के हिसाब से 100 नो टैक्स क्रेडिट टैक्स पेबल बाय द मैन्युफैक्चरर इज 100 रुपीस सेकंड लेट्स गो टू द होलसेलर होलसेलर इज सेलिंग एट 1500 सो 1500 के हिसाब से ही विल हैव टू पे द टैक्स 150 जो टैक्स ड्यू हो रहा है 150 बट ही विल शो द इनवॉइस परचेस इनवॉइस और परचेस इनवॉइस में जो टैक्स पे किया है इसने मैन्युफैक्चरर को दैट विल बी मेंशन एंड ऑन शोइंग दैट ही विल बी एबल टू गेट द क्रेडिट ऑफ हंड्रेड रुपीज सो फाइनली 150 फिफ्टी ड्यू था हंड्रेड का क्रेडिट मिल गया बाय शोइंग द इनवॉइस सो फाइनल अमाउंट ही हैज टू पे ओनली फिफ्टी रुपीज सिमिलरली रिटेल सेलर को टू थाउजेंड रुपीज में जो सेल कर रहा है he has to pay the tax normal course 200 but once he will show the invoice tax invoice 150 ka usko credit mil jayega whichever he has paid to the wholesaler and finally he will have to pay only 50 rupees as the tax so the total tax due to the government will come only 200 rupees and total tax received by the government 200 This system is good because इसमें जो tax चोरी है वो minimum हो जाती है because everybody will have to maintain the record of the earlier purchases तो इससे जो government को checking रहती है tax payment की audit में भी easy जाता है audit trail becomes very easy